Hi, my name is Dr. Thomas Joseph, course instructor for C215 Operations Management course. I want to welcome you to this series of short videos for the management and planning competency. And we basically will be looking at chapter 14, our resource planning section. We'll be discussing enterprise resource planning. We'll be discussing material requirements planning and capacity requirements planning. So let's get started with our enterprise resource planning software discussion. I hope you enjoy. So let's talk about a section of our management and planning competency, uh, ERP systems or enterprise resource planning. Um, ERP in essence is it's a simpler concept than what we make it out to be, to, to be solely in, in honest. Um, so we can break down, I think the first thing to do is to break down the, the term word by word. And as I have often mentioned is the definitions of a term or the understanding of some of the concepts, they're generally in the terms themselves. So if we break it down, it's simple for us to understand it. So enterprise resource planning, let's break this down word by word. Enterprise can be substituted for the word company or organization or firm or business, right? So somebody can say uh, something like, I built this enterprise. So now we are a multi-billion dollar enterprise. I built this company, I built this business, I built this organization, right? It's the same term. So it's enterprise represents the business, the firm, the company, uh, the organization. Resource has to do with what the company has. The company has two resources. One, um, it's materials uh, or supplies. And then two, it has its workers or capacity. So that's where we will we'll talk about this in, in two other sessions. We'll talk about material requirements planning and capacity requirements planning. That's what the resources of the enterprise are. They are the company's materials and the company's capacity. We'll talk more about that. And then the word planning, we understand, is a word that goes with the idea of management. So essentially managing, managing your resources. So enterprise resource planning has to simply deal with a company manages, controls, plans, organizes its resources for what purpose? To ensure effectiveness. So in definition, enterprise resource planning systems, or we could say enterprise resource planning software systems, and we'll abbreviate enterprise resource planning as ERP. There are software systems used to link all the different functional areas in an organization. So let's take a look at what an organization looks without that software system. We have here, for example, here is uh, the functional the functional areas of a manufacturing firm, right? So here we have each functional area is on its own. It's standalone, engineering, engineering, operations, marketing, finance, human resource. Each functional area works on its own. In incorporating an ERP software system, the organization now looks like this. So what do we see? we see are an integrated aspect of the organization. Before we see a seg segregated or separated functions with an ERP system, we see an integrated system. So all this, this um, functions of the organization, they're now integrated with one another. So that's what e the enterprise system does. It links all the different functions of the area into one. So from our text, we get the definition for ERP systems as large sophisticated software systems used for identifying and planning the enterprise or the business-wide resources 
needed to coordinate all activities involved in producing and delivering products. So what do we see in ERP? We see an integration of the organization operations and that creates a holistic view of the business functions. You have an integrated view of the organization. Everything is integrated. So we can see what one department do. There is communication, clear communication between organization. This is done through a single database, one application and a united face. I want you guys to think of one thing. When you think of ERP software systems, think of yourself at work and you say, oh, my system is down, right? Think of the system that you are putting information in every day. For example, if you are a nurse at a hospital, every activity that you perform with a patient, you have to record or document that, right? Salesforce, for example, Epic, Dentric, um, SAP, Oracle, these are all enterprise resource planning softwares that organizations use to manage. So it's one single database, one application, and a unified interface. What is the result of that? There is an improvement in the flow of information within the company. What I want you guys to see from an ERP software system study is the idea of the company coming together as one. We are one big organization functioning under the same thing. Then if the companies improve, um, improved flow of information or there is an improved in the flow of information within the firm, that will increase the ability to incorporate best practices, right? Remember when we look at how those, the functions were divided or, or just stand alone, right? With the integration, we can now see, human resource can see how finances do in business and they can incorporate those best practices within departments. And so we have, a, there is a structured, a more structured organization. Yes, it brings better management, managerial control. It also brings faster decision-making and lastly, there is a reduction in cost. So when the organization spends to enhance its operation, then it's spending for the whole organization rather than for a single department. So what we want you to learn is for, for the purpose of our assessment for a C215 uh, course, the benefits, some of the benefits of, of, of um, ERP system. Our textbook outlines tangible benefits, and I'm just going to read a couple of those from this list. There's a reduction in inventory and, and staffing, increased productivity. Um, we see an increased revenue and profits, and we see improved on time delivery and performances. There are also intangible benefits, right? We know tangible and intangible, right? Um, so some of those are improved visibility of corporate data, Right, we can see, right? Um, I, I work on, on, on a client's or a patient's information. I put that information into the system. Then somebody else who works after me can see that information. There is better integration between systems and better visibility even into the supply chain process if we are referring to um, business, uh, manufacturing business as well. There is improved flexibility uh, along with that. Now, this you can tell to integrate the organization that way, this comes with a cost, right? So there are costs relative to um, an ERP system. Number one, there is software cost. That soft for the costs of for the software can range from thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to several million dollars. That's going to depend on the size of the organization. So imagine for a moment companies like Walmart and Amazon and the larger corporations that exist today, these companies have to utilize a large ERP software system to bring the entire operation under one umbrella, operating domestically, nationally, and globally. So service cost of software. Secondly, there is service cost. Normally, companies to, impl to implement uh, an, a, a, an ERP system, they will have to hire 
um, outside consultants, right? Outside consultant, consultants, as well as professional services that can help with the selection of the software. It can also help with con configuration. Um, these service costs can include training, customization, as well as implementation. Another cost that comes with ERP system is a maintenance cost, right? Those costs have to be maintained. You probably get some upgrades on your cell phone and you just have to download the updates and all that stuff. So maintenance costs, there are fees associated with that. Um, it involves technical support, fees for upgrades, like fixing bugs uh, for updates and like fixing bugs and upgrades, right? Um, as we all know, most of these systems year after year, they go through different upgrades and updates and it has to be done. And last but not least, all the cost uh, for ERP system, which requires human resources, right? There have to be human resource or people trained to use those. And so companies experience high cost in running their operating, their enterprise resource planning software systems. So what have we learned here? Enterprise systems, they can be costly, there are several benefits. There are tangible and intangible benefits that an organization can, can experience through that. Enterprise ERP systems, they integrate the organization, brings all functional area of the company into one. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this session on enterprise resource planning and that you have learned something valuable concerning the enterprise resource planning software. This is very important as you review this part of the objective assessment for management and planning in our C215 course resources. All the best to you and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.